Hey y'all, here at OS Reviews. Today we're taking a quick look at a digital camera from more Zimi. This is a very low-cost point-and-shoot slash toy camera even for kids. Uh, that's how it's being advertised as and safe even for younger children and it sells for around 40 bucks after coupons are applied at checkout, so low cost. So it's not meant to be taken super seriously, but it does have a design that tries to imitate more expensive DSLRs with this kind of lens that protrudes, although it does have 48 megapixels and it's from Sony. It's pretty similar to the quality that you'll get from lower cost smartphones these days. It does have a flashlight on the front that you can use to illuminate subjects in the dark and also has a rear-facing camera as well, or a selfie cam. What looks like a viewfinder is actually a second lens that is pointing at you, as well as 32 gigabytes of storage, which is included via a micro SD card. The digital zoom, by the way, is up to 20 times, so it's not optical zoom. And here's what it looks like next to a real SLR or DSLR camera. Last but not least, it has a 1,200 milliamp hour capacity battery, which will last for up to eight hours of taking photos and viewing them back. It's also capable of recording video up to full HD resolution, but as a camcorder, it's not gonna be quite as good because there is no stabilization and the settings are pretty limited. And then it does also have a few colors that can be picked between some other accessories which are included. There is a lanyard strap which has all of these emojis and characters stamped on it, along with a charging cable that is using USB Type-C, which is great to see. And this can also be used to sync and transfer the images and videos to your computer. There is a quick start guide that tells you how to quickly set it up and use it, along with some stickers which are also included. On one hand, it is pretty crazy to see how fast technology evolves, as just three or four years ago, a camera with 48 megapixels uh, would definitely not be, you know, billed as something just for kids. Here it is next to an average smartphone these days, six inch screen, so you get an idea of how small this thing is. Although it does have that protruding lens due to that rotating crown design, the body is made out of a soft touch rubber material, so the coating here makes it feel pretty grippy and resistant to fingerprints. We have the LED flashlight on the top, it's not a xenon flash, but can still illuminate things a little bit better. There is a shutter key on the top here, however, it's a one-stage key, so you can press it down and it will take an image, but doesn't enable the autofocus. If you want to have the autofocus function, you have to tap on the second button on the side here. So it is a little strange that there's basically two shutter keys on this camera. I do think that maybe they could have just used one button and made this a two-stage really is the same budget Sony CMOS camera sensor that's been found on a lot of entry-level and mid-range Android smartphones. There is no standard tripod mount on the very bottom of the camera, but since this is for kids, I would say that that is what it is. On the base here, we do have access to the aforementioned second camera lens. It's not quite as high as the 48 megapixel main lens, probably a little closer to 12 megapixels, but it's there. 2.4 inch LCD display. We have the array of controls for navigation that we'll take a closer look at. And then on the side here, there is a flap that covers up the Type-C port for charging and data transfer and the micro SD. And we can take a closer look at the boot up animation. It does also mean that the camera doesn't have a removable battery. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Everything is integrated. The screen is decent quality, I have to say. It is an IPS panel. Even the brightness levels are acceptable. And from here, it is a pretty simple interface. We're able to, again, twist the top barrel portion basically to zoom on in. And you can see it's a digital zoom. So the more you zoom, the less detail you'll get compared to an optical zoom, but at least it is functional. Let's try tapping on there once. You can see it's going to count down three, two, one and then it's finally gonna capture the shot and it looks a lot better. So for the most part, I would say just use the button here on the edge. The top button really isn't all that useful unless you're capturing a landscape shot. Field of view of the camera is average. I would say, again, it's comparable to that of a smartphone camera, so it's not gonna be too bad, but it certainly isn't a wide angle lens either, like an action cam. Now the interface here is very simple, but the UI does take a little bit of time to get used to, I have to say. Uh, you can tap, for example, on the settings key here, basically to go into some of the other options, like changing the scene modes, and then you tap on the M key on the top there to basically act as enter. And from here, there's a few dedicated modes, like a night mode, a portrait mode, uh, that does make a slight difference. There's also a auto smile detection mode, which will 
take an image when a smile has been recognized, as well as stickers that you can play with, the swimming fish that you can capture along with your image, uh, the fast fry food, happy birthday, there's also kind of these animal emojis. So it is kind of a fun touch, and this gives you an idea of some of the uh, available templates that you get baked into the software here. So going through this, again, quite a lot. Here's one inspired by comic art, Halloween. A burst mode can capture up to three shots in a second, and there's also timed shooting, so it can count down to take an image. So if I tap on the menu key again, it will also allow me to change between some of the video selection modes, once more to change the timestamp, and again to change the flash setting, as well as the resolution. What you won't find on here, for example, would be an HDR mode, as well as more granular controls for like the distance of focus, such as infinity versus macro. You don't get any of that. It's pretty much locked at the landscape shot by default unless you're using the autofocus key, and that is pretty much it. And out of 32 gigabytes with the 48 megapixel resolution, you get around 9,000 shots. What I can do is just tap and hold on the M key for a few seconds, and then it will switch into that front-facing camera, as you can see there, with some exceptions being that this camera isn't autofocus. Tapping on the button once, though, will change into the video recording mode, again, by default at full HD, which is the max resolution it can record. And let's preview some of the example shots that we just took a closer look at. UI is, for the most part, okay in terms of responsiveness. And uh, you can see here a few more examples of the quality of the shots that you get. Again, in terms of moderate lighting or in good lighting conditions, it's actually not too shabby, I have to say. Similar to kind of most smartphone cameras these days, you'll at least get some decent looking shots. So although it won't be the best camera ever, it's also not too bad, I have to say, for something in this price range colors like in, in outdoor and good lighting conditions still look decent. And now we get into the territory of some examples of uh, close-up shots. Again, text still looking okay. Although the image quality is better than expected, comparable again to a smartphone quality, I have to say that the video recording capabilities are actually quite subpar, primarily because it has a very um, almost tinny sounding microphone that unfortunately just doesn't pick up your voice all that well, as well as the frame rates here again just being pretty limited around 30 frames per second and without much stabilization. It certainly isn't going to be the best camcorder in the world if you are recording primarily video or even for kids. Uh, I would say in that uh, particular case getting a action cam, even a budget one, will probably be a better bet. But if you are primarily, again, taking images, uh, things like that, then that will still be all right. And then finally, in terms of if you put it down onto a table, this is what it looks like in terms of the profile angle. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the more Zimi Kids digital camera. Again, not something to be taken super seriously, which for the pricing of, again, under 50 bucks, I wanted to kind of see what the quality would be like here in 2021. And though it certainly isn't going to be a replacement for an actual DSLR or real camera, for something meant really for kids, it actually isn't too shabby, just for capturing some occasional shots primarily, colors and details are surprisingly good. You can check out more details if you're interested below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.